Uh-oh. Hmm. Oh boy. I can finally see you, and you can finally see me. It's been so long, and my heart has ached for this moment. I've missed you dearly. Uh, do you know about the echo? Every word you spoke found its way to me. I know him, and I know his construct. He was deluded by his fear of death. Pay him no mind. Names are their attempts to capture that which cannot be captured. They call me the Shifting Mound, a pale imitation of what I actually am. Ever the passive player, always reacting and never acting. But it's woven into your nature, isn't it? I feel like this is directly calling out your playstyle, Ratsar. <laughs> when the yeah. echo spun us from one into two, he gave you a choice and me a role to play. I am not death, but I contain it in my multitude. So, will you attempt to destroy me and bring about a world devoid of death and the possibility of meaning? Or, will you open the final doors to our liberation? Don't you have a say in all of this? Of course I have a say in all of this. You and I share reflections of each other's burdens. Just as you and I share reflections of each other's gifts. If we didn't, the winding paths that brought us here wouldn't have been full of strife and conflict. Yeah, what was the point of all this? If you're saying that, it's because you don't yet understand. But we cannot use words alone to grasp at things that words cannot express. And you cannot rationalize with logic that which defies it. Yeah, Josh. Violence and passion are dances that both of us know well. Uh... If this is what it takes to enlighten you, then so be it. You are a body. You are gory ribbons. You are a body again. And you feel all of it. On and on it goes until your bodies are not your thoughts are not you. Alive, dead, alive, dead, alive, dead, then alive and dead and alive and dead all at once. You learn to put yourself away and to follow the flow of reality. And you used it to rise above me. You died countless steely deaths, and you lived countless short lives, and yet it is all so far behind you. Unjust impossibilities pushed you to become something you would never have been without them. Uh, man, I... See, okay, I guess... I guess here's where we kind of come to, like, the, the fork of the road here. Because I've, I've said and maintain a lot of very nice things about Slay the Princess. I think it's a very interesting game. Uh, I think it's quite good. I think there's lots of it that are really well executed. But just, like, I'm looking at these options, and I can't imagine... Like, I, I, I don't feel any of these things. I think this is the part where we define how we feel about the whole thing. Which I guess if you don't really feel like any of these things is a problem, I would lean towards either I won't engage with violence or we were self-destructive. Like, again, I feel like if this is really all about like a relationship between two people going, hey, we should not be violent to each other is kind of important. Mm -hmm. Self 
destructive? Or did the beauty of our dance reach beyond the shadow of death? It was lethality that made us what we were. To question everything is to deny the proof of reality that lies in front of you. By believing in yourself. It's interesting because the question of like why you do something in a video game, like what your motivations are, is yeah. super open, right? Like there, there, are, there are just right. so many ways of handling it. But even though, and it, I don't actually feel like it's often I bump into something where I just don't feel like I could summon or create a motivation. I, there's, there's something about the kind of like, like the the nature of the scenarios as they're presented, and like kind of the nature of the narrative as it's being told, that really just like I I didn't feel like I had a hook anywhere in here where I could kind of where I could kind of make the stakes of these scenes and these characters mean much to me. And I, I don't know why I mean, that is. A lot of it is, I think, that we really are dealing with uh, ciphers and allegories, right? None of these are characters. Mm -hmm. So, like, trying to, try to describe the motivation of a Birdman who has no backstory, no identity, no real motivation other than someone else told him to go kill a princess, and the princess herself isn't really a princess. She's a metaphor for change and death and creation and a bunch of other stuff. And you're you're trying to divine like how would these two how how would I interact in this situation? But it's so abstract, so devoid of sort of a fundamental humanity that it becomes really difficult to. It, it really just becomes about how you want to explore this metaphor rather than anything about making a role playing style choice about what would I do or what would this character do. I think it does suffer a bit from like we are so far into the nothing you see is really real level here that like even the narrator showing up and saying hey i was god i made you god you need to stop death like you're still going is that really what's happening though like the, the artifice being plain is very much a part of what this game is doing and i think it, it, it the artifice being plain definitely does not prevent me from engaging with something but on some level, I guess, I guess when I feel like I'm coming into something that kind of has that meta-referential layer, it's difficult for me to plug back in on kind of an immersive role-playing level. Like, I can know, like, I can come at this from like, oh, this is like, this is, this is kind of a take on what this format is that's kind of like, demonstrating all this stuff, but, but it's like very bounded fantasy tropes in a way that is instantly like communicates that, hey, something else is going on here. Uh, but like, I, I can't move from that mode to then engaging with the scenarios in kind of an emotional way, I guess. Um, so I, she's going through the princesses here and asking us to like, Ask judgment on what they say about the idea of ending death, I think. Um, I am in camp, everything should not be immortal. So, that I am, but I don't, I don't really feel like I've engaged. I, I For my part, and this, this very well may yeah. something, like, I, I don't feel like I engage meaningfully with that concept. Uh, while playing Slay the Princess, or while, while being part of Slay the Princess playing, I guess. You know what's like, It's more like it's Talk gesturing towards a thing that I believe experience. than it is like is the same. touching on to something that is specifically to relevant to the stories to I've experienced. To be a thought is a vine, and some thoughts nurture thorns that bleed the soul. And endless growth that blots your vision and strangles your trust. When I succumbed to myself, you patiently stood by me and cut the thistles that rooted in my skin. Your compassion is what freed us both, but compassion is a thing that must be nurtured, and you cannot nurture that which cannot change. Uh, I guess I don't want to. Or can you stop the fight to surrender? I think 
I don't know if I want to do that because I feel like that that just cuts out the rest of the. Okay, um, I would go with yeah. the. Uh, I of course I helped you. I didn't want either of us to hate each other. Yeah. Then help me again. We are each other's liberation. Your little heart tries to sink into your body, and another, and another, and another. Do I miss your heart because I can't stand to see it go? Love melted into skepticism, and you. I just realized that those scenes that introduce each of these princesses is from the princess's point of view. You sought the truth, then. Will you hide from it now that it is within your grasp? I will also say that, uh, by the way, I, I, um, one of the reasons I'm not talking here is not so much that I don't think there's anything worth talking here. It, 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 I had slept really atrociously last night. I, I just wanted, I, I, I wasn't going to bring it up, but I, I, I feel like I've been quiet long enough, like the, the back half of this, that I should just disclaim that. I mean, I think the only option is to stop the fight early yeah. and surrender. Well, I, I, I'm... Well, well, what is our perspective? I mean, this gets to Rutzgren's point. Like, I don't is... know. That's the problem that we're kind of running up against. It doesn't help I'm very curious support. what options we have if we say no. So we've already kind of seeded all her points. Let's see what happens here. If you need more time to open your eyes, then I will give you all the time in the world. The sensation of bleeding and sweating and breaking and mending and dying and living comes back in vivid color. A past that is also present. A pain that is everything and yet nothing at all. You feel the shame of a hundred oh, demon lady. and the pride of a hundred conquests. All of the peaks and valleys weaving themselves into a single tapestry, free of beginning and free of end. Do you remember when we killed each other with such fervent passion that death itself no longer sat on our shoulders? Yeah, that was hot. <laughs> Do you want to just say it was beautiful, or do we want to go uh, like it was meaningless? No, because or... that that concedes to the conflict. I think I think I think yeah. we want to go with something that doesn't celebrate us trying to kill Could one work another together to build something better, maybe. Yeah. But for us, that was better. For me, there was no better end. I lost myself in an artistry so profound that it lifted both of us into something greater. Nothing is immutable. Everything that is exists only in relation to everything it isn't. There is no constant. There is no center. Open your eyes and accept what we are. We can leave this prison together. Okay, so we're, we, I think, probably are pretty close to the end now, because... Yeah... It is from my vantage point that I can see the totality of truth. This universe dies, and a new one is born. And that one dies, and a new one is born. And you and I get to witness it all, weaving a tapestry of life wherever we go. have a leave option we, we have a uh, I, I, leaving would be 
go with her and do the whole universes being killed and reborn thing. Like, that's, that's surrendering the fight. Um, curious what this one will get us to. What I offer you is not perspective. It is true. Whatever you're trying to do right now, you don't have to do it alone. Oh. I'm all of them? I assume in the same way that you're all of you. Like, the, the thing that struck me when she was explaining that is like, well, if the whole idea is that if we leave with her, death is allowed to continue, but we don't die, like... Oh, so death happens to everyone except, you know, these abstract concepts. Apparently that's not true, but we can worry about it later. She's too many things all at once out here. If you want to get through to her, you need some way to get through all of that divine confidence. There's still a piece of me nestled close to where it all began. I can take you there. I can take you to her heart. It's time to resume our dance. She's relentless, isn't she? Let's make this quick. Are you ready? Are we going to go back? Yeah, let's see what happens. Then let's go. Oh. Oh. Yay. oh. Yeah. All right. Don't think any of the others have forgotten what you said at the mirror. They all talked, and they're not happy. But we can discuss uh -oh. that later. We have a job to do. When we told them they were going to die, or like when we talked to the narrator? Do you need me to describe things it's just us I think the rest of them are still out there jumbled up in the rest of her like I'm not sure I actually like understand what we're even trying to get across to her but I'm 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 just kind of following this because I'm curious where this goes yeah it's dead silent in here Whatever it was that was left of him, I don't think it could handle you waking up to godhood. Pretty sure he got obliterated. Good. Screw him. Good riddance. Yeah. He really put us through hell, didn't he? Now I know why they capitalized um, his letters. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering about that too, I noticed that. The interior of the cabin is, well, it's a cabin, yeah? <laughs> There isn't much here, just a table and a knife and a door. And some windows. You know, come to think of it, I don't think he ever really mentioned the windows, did he? There's no mirror, either. I think you broke it. And I know you're still trying to find some middle ground, but if things go south, we're going to need that blade. All right, do we take the blade or do we not take the blade? Uh, I think I... I think we need it. Do we, do we feel like it's better to go in arms open? You know, honestly, I support death anyway, so I say enter it without the blade. Like, if she wins, death continues anyway, and we can't die, what's it matter? Yeah. What do you think? No like, like, in what scenario is us stabbing her going to do anything good? I don't, I mean, I have no idea what we're going to find down there. <laughs> It's, it's amusing that we are arguably as stymied now that we have complete context as we were on the first one. We had no context. Right, like... Uh, but yes, I'd say we go down without a knife. All right, no knife. No blade it is. I'm not sure what we'll be able to do without it, but your judgment has gotten us this far. Just like fucking chill and have a coke. The stairs. Do you remember the first time we were here? The first time we heard her voice? Have you figured out what you want to do yet, or are you going to keep trying to find a center that doesn't exist? It sounded just like that. A little sharp, a little menacing. Only she didn't know us. And down we go. We shouldn't keep her waiting. And there you are. Hands 
Empty. So you don't feel like recreating our first meeting detail for detail. I wonder what else will be different. Maybe there's still room for us to chat before the final curtain call. What do you say? Uh... Are you the same out there? No. I feel like I'm myself again. What if we just leave? Honestly, me neither. <laughs> Do you know where this cabin is? Because I don't. I don't even know what's supposed to be outside other than us. What would even happen if we leave? What would that even mean? <clears throat> okay, these are big statements of purpose. Y yeah. Josh, I think you have to pick this one. Uh, I'm leaning towards not knowing what it means is why I want it. We knew everything out there. But we don't know this. I want to know this. I guess when you put it that way, I want that too. I think I'm going to stay right here. Whatever you're doing right now, wherever you're going, it feels like it's for just the two of you. Yeah, I'm not sure I'll be alone for too long anyways. The others are still around here somewhere. I'll find them. Still have no idea who those, like what, what the voices were. idea what it's going to be like out there. Well, hopefully we won't run into a whole bunch of other cabins. Not that I'm scared or anything. It's like the ending of Bioshock Infinite. There's just a bunch of cabins with, like, <laughs> monsters going in to slay princesses. Well, I mean, we did that when we tried to escape, and it was just like, oh, every path leads to a cabin, and there's a whole bunch of cabins, and then the world broke. And if it's bad, then it won't be bad. Not with you. Are you ready? Of course I am. Are... are you? Okay! <sighs> Good job, y'all. Just did the people. Alright. That, that now makes me very curious what the other ending is, where we go off and become a god, or remain a god. Yeah, uh, really interesting narrative experiment. I, I do feel like kind of the, the point that you were homing in on, Red Skarn, which is like, how am I supposed to feel about all of this when... It's hard to tell what's even there to care about, like what is even going on. And when, even when, when kind of, we yeah, get when that the, context, exactly, yeah. it's it's so monumentally outside the scope of like human existence that even then it's still difficult to tell what you're supposed to feel about it. Yeah, I, I I don't think this is this would have suited the uh, specific design goals, but I I almost think that this would like for me this would have benefited from not having from this being a, like a a game where you do not actually choose dialogue options but just take actions. I think that that probably would have been much more like 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 in a way not having to articulate a specific point of view. To drive things forward probably would have helped me kind of make the translation between like abstract scenario to like kind of heartfelt immersion that's kind of you're basically describing undertale at that point uh, i mean yeah, a little i, I mean i don't know if you've played undertale, undertale works it, so well yeah 
I mean, you know, so I can put it another way. Like, I, I don't want to make too pat a comparison because, of course, they have very different goals. But, like, imagine if in the Stanley Parable you were constantly, like, choosing dialogue options justifying the things you were doing to the narrator. <laughs> That's what this kind of feels like a little bit to me. So, I think it was really neat. Um, I'll probably go play through it again myself and see what the other endings are like. And yeah, um, that's, that's it. All right.